check this out. This is Google Maps zoomed out with this interactive globe rotation. I'd like to ultimately implement this exact interaction with panning and zooming, but a first step towards that is make a spinning globe. This is the example that we'll create. We'll discuss Google Maps 3D globe feature, geo-orthographic, projection.rotate, request animation frame, and type sphere in GeoJSON. The idea is to make something kind of like this that just rotates on its axis like this without any interaction. I'll start by forking this world map simple example and I'll call it spinning globe. The first step is to make it look like a globe by changing the projection from Geo Natural Earth 1 to Geo Orthographic. Once we change that, we see a globe. All right, sweet. So I want to make this rotating and also tilted just a little bit. In D3 Geo, projection.rotate is documented. It says here we can pass a two or three element array of numbers specifying the rotation angles and degrees about each spherical axis. These correspond to yaw, pitch, and roll. These are concepts about an airplane where you see here this is the roll axis, this is the yaw axis, and this is the pitch axis. Let's try that. Here we have projection defined, so I think I'll just add a line here that says projection.rotate and I'll just pass in 0, 0, 0 to start. And if I increment one of these to say 10, it rotated a little bit. And minus 10 rotates it the other way. Let's see, what does the second number do? Ah, it rotates it that way. And minus 10 rotates it the other way. That's the kind of rotation I was thinking about. And then this last number rotates it that way. Okay, cool. I don't think we'll be using that. Now what I want to do is have this first number change over time. This will play into our state, so I think this notion of animation and changing this rotation over time should live in viz.js, which is kind of orchestrating everything. Viz.js is where we are fetching the data and setting the state. I would like to use a similar pattern for setting the rotation. So at the bottom of the file, I'm going to add a new block that says if state.rotation is undefined, then let's set rotation to be, well, I had something in map.js. Let's start it as this. Rotation will be this set of angles. Eventually, I would like to animate this, but for now, let me just propagate this state field into our map. Up here, we are already destructuring data, so let's also destructure rotation. And rotation should be defined before we invoke the map, so I'll just add a check for rotation, and we can pass rotation into our map. And now that we are destructuring rotation, we don't need to use state.rotation here, we can just use rotation. Now, over in the map.js, we can destructure rotation here and move this logic for setting the rotation on the projection to be inside this map component. Now, remember that we use path, which is an instance of geopath instantiated with this projection, and path is what actually projects everything for us. And so I'm not sure if this will propagate, like if we have to reset it, uh, but let's find out. Okay, that looks like it worked, meaning we can set rotate after setting up the geopath. Now all we need to do is just pass in this rotation to projection.rotate. Okay, now the last step here is to animate this whole thing. 
Since rotation will only be undefined once, it's a safe place here to kick off an animation. And to kick off an animation, we can define a function called animate. And this is where we can set the state. And the idea is that this function can be invoked again and again on each animation frame. Displays, in general, update about 60 times a second, or 60 frames per second, and one animation frame is ideally at 60 frames a second, meaning 60 times each second this function should be invoked and update the state. Notice that nothing is showing up because this function is not invoked at all. To change that, I'm going to add an invocation right here. And the trick now is to get this to run at 60 frames per second. To do that, we can use the request animation frame API. This method tells the browser that you wish to perform an animation and requests that the browser calls a specified function to update an animation before the next repaint. A repaint is when the browser reconciles the DOM to the currently displayed stuff on the screen. Note, your callback routine must itself call request animation frame again if you want to animate another frame at the next repaint. To tie this all together, we can say request animation frame and pass the animate function. Now, I believe this is executing again and again. However, the rotation is not changing. So let's modify this to first set the initial state so we have th something to start with. And then on each animation frame, we can set the rotation to be based on the previous state's rotation by accessing state.rotation at index 0, which at first will be 0. And what I want to do now is change that a little bit on each frame. For example, put minus 1. And it worked. Now we have a rotating globe. OK, it kind of works. It's a little bit buggy. The outline around it seems to appear and disappear. And we've got this line here, which doesn't seem quite right. And it's also pretty slow, pretty, pretty laggy, especially in this view where we're seeing a lot of countries. But basically, it works. If we inspect the DOM here, we can see what's happening. The D strings of these paths are updating each frame. Graticule.outline seems to be a little bit broken. I think that's what's giving us this line that goes across here. If I just comment this out, that line goes away. I remember in the past using a type sphere to uh, render the outline of the globe. Let me try that. I'll bring back this logic, but I will remove this usage of graticule.outline. And instead, I'll put an object as the data here with type sphere. All right, that worked. Brilliant. Now we get this nice outline here. All right, that's how you can make a spinning globe with D3. To recap all the changes we've made, we used TypeSphere to get this outline in a non-buggy way. We used GeoOrthographic to get a globe projection. And on that projection, we call projection.rotate, passing in rotation, which is destructured from the options object of our map. Over in viz.js, we introduced this logic that defines rotation on our state. If rotation is undefined, and by the way, rotation is destructured from state above, then we set the initial rotation here, and we define this animate function that gets immediately invoked. This animate function sets the state so that the rotation 
is based on the previous rotation, but this first angle is just incremented by negative 1. We then use a request animation frame to invoke this function as fast as possible up to 60 frames a second. Also, we check that rotation is defined, and then we pass that as part of the options when we invoke the map. What I'd like to do next is make it interactive, so you can interactively rotate and zoom on this globe. Also, performance could be improved here by migrating from SVG to Canvas.